When I came to the trial, I knew that the trial was going to be conducted in de facto secrecy or secrecy in fact. And I decided that I wanted to know what was going on. This was the largest criminal investigation ever into a publisher and its source, and it seemed like there was no in-depth coverage. Alyssa Bryan is a crowdfunded independent journalist who has been covering the Bradley Manning trial since January 2011, and she's an exceptional person because she was the unofficial stenographer when the trial started. The website alexobryan.com has now grown to a great resource for anyone interested in the Bradley Manning case. It contains infographics, documents, exhibit lists, and is a must visit for anyone interested in the Bradley Manning trial. One of the more important aspects of this trial that has had gotten absolutely zip coverage is the State Department's number one role in this case. They have been, in a sense, a, a, a puppet master of the military prosecutors, blocking discovery. You know, the Department of State has been an ongoing partner with the FBI and uh, the Department of Defense in investigating Manning and WikiLeaks. Last week, when there were five journalists in the press pool, uh, one of them was a wire journalist, Department of State witnesses entered stipulations of expected testimony about the 117 cables that Manning is charged with under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act charge that has an espionage clause in it. Um, and we have yet to have any serious analysis or coverage of these cables and how they relate to aiding the enemy, how they relate to wanted publication, an unprecedented charge in the Manning trial. It's never been used in a military court martial. It's not tied to any existing federal violation or punitive article under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Uh, not tied, no analysis as how they relate to the stealing U.S. government property or the, the espionage or uh, the, the 1030 uh, Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. I, I hope that the public would be as long, alarmed as me about the conduct of the air weapon, of the air weapons team crew members. I want the American public to know that not everyone in Iraq and Afghanistan were targets that needed to be neutralized rather people who were struggling to live in the pressure cooker environment of what we call asymmetric warfare. After the release, I was encouraged by a response in the media and general public who observed the Aero Weapons Team video. As I hoped, others were just as troubled, if not more troubled than, than me by what they saw. When I've spoken to subject matter experts in military law and also just simply, you know, espionage uh, crimes or, um, uh, you know, constitutional lawyers, for example, they all say to me that if he gets 20 years, he's lucky. And currently, with his plea to 10 lesser included offenses, he's exposed to 20 years. The government is going, moving forward with a case of life plus 149. That's their, that's their grand case. Um, I, I think that I'm not optimistic. It's often been said that uh, you know, Snowden's uh, desire for asylum is a result of just simply watching how Manning was treated, you know, 1,101 days of pretrial confinement before coming to trial, uh, yet the court rules that his speedy trial rights haven't been violated. Nine months of uh, very strange conditions at Quantico, and only a week of that was considered to be unlawful, giving him 112 sentencing days uh, credit. Uh, when he's facing a sentence of life plus 149 years. So there's that aspect, but I think also the way the, the U.S. government has um, uh, asserted the 641 charges of stealing U.S. government property. I mean, that's a, that's a charge against Manning. He has five uh, specifications of that. And I, I think that um, clearly uh, it's certainly uh, in line with the Obama administration's uh, inquisition of whistleblowers. The case is important because it will establish a precedent for military leaks, which I think we're going to be seeing more of as the, in the future as it becomes easier and easier for people from privates onwards to leaking information. The last time a member of the military was found guilty of aiding the enemy by leaking information to the press was in 1863 when Private Henry Vanderwater was found guilty of leaking information to a newspaper based in Richmond, Virginia. For that crime of aiding the enemy, Private Vanderwater was sentenced to three months hard labor. Bradley Manning, if he is found guilty of aiding the enemy, could spend the rest of his life in prison.